Hey all, welcome to Pop and Corks. I'm farmer winemaker Eric Jensen. Today we got an unbelievable guest you're gonna love. Probably the biggest baller I've ever had on the show. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome to Pop and Corks. I'm Eric Jensen, farmer and winemaker at Booker and My Favorite Neighbor Wines. You know, I've had some big guests on the show, man. I've had a couple uh, potential Hall of Famers on the show, but I don't think anyone holds a candle to this cat. <laughs> ten time Grammy winner, or am I speaking out of line? Have you added ten, two or no, three no, more? No, ten. Hopefully, uh, hopefully more. Ten time <laughs> Grammy Award winner. Uh, legendary. Would we say mixing engineer? Is that? Yeah, that, yeah. I'll take we, that. I'll take that. Yeah, we legendary <laughs> mixing engineer. Uh, let me just drop a couple names. Kanye West, Whitney Houston, Tupac Shakur, Justin Bieber. The list is startling and, and almost scary. Uh, resides in L.A. from Guatemala, which makes it even fucking cooler. Uh, Manny Mariquin. Thanks, brother. Yeah, thank you, man. That was such a nice introduction. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Beautiful weather, beautiful place amazing bubbles uh yeah man i'm ready to get down and dirty well manny just got off the road he made that la drive a guy like manny usually gets carted around probably by hilo uh <laughs> with a bunch of sherpas but uh manny and uh, terry uh, his wife uh, made the drive and just pulled in and what do we start with here manny we started with some uh 2010 man, uh, reserve yes. uh, dom perignon oh gosh what a Cheers to this. Cheers, uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm not liking it. <laughs> My glass, glass is almost gone. Manny it's, rolls in. He's been on the road, and he made a dinner reservation 30 minutes away. Didn't uh, know yeah. it. So and, we just bailed him out. In L.A., that's going from the 4 or 5 to uh, Hollywood. I mean, it's no, no big deal. But Shit. It, I, I, I was in New York a couple weeks ago. That was 22 minutes to go 1.2 miles. Geez. I finally got out and walked. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You can't do 22 that. minutes. And it lied, it kept backing up, and so I walked. <laughs> so, Manny, I got, real quick, I got my phone out. Yes. And I just want to go through a couple <laughs> names of who this cat. By the way, he's got to leave tomorrow morning because he's got to. <laughs> oh, am I allowed to say this or not? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. It's he's got to come out in a week and a half, so yes. He's, he's got to finish up the Migos album. Yes. And uh, these guys, you talk about. I, I've seen Migos multiple times, and they've never been within an hour <laughs> in fact at lala after my daughter almost got trampled they showed up so late they got one song <laughs> the true yes. story so i compared them to like guns and roses of today like axel rose like fuck it i'm just gonna show up whenever i want to show up and it's three like big personalities too these guys are freaking stars they're rock stars we we gotta the way we gotta coordinate moving them around not that i'm involved in that but to get them to the studio and who's at the studio uh the studio has seven different rooms so we got to be careful on who shows up and when they show up i mean they're freaking rock stars which is amazing i mean i spent a few so hours wait a minute you gotta like separate them a little bit well not them but you know we have different rooms with different clients so different if, clients, if yeah. there's another you know you never know who they got somebody got beef with so we got to oh, like yeah. really look you know you know use the the thing called the internet and find out who fucking doesn't like who and whose girlfriend or whose girl and guys and drugs and rock sex drugs and hip-hop and there's no rules with those cats. they are uh, no rules i mean like, so there's, no dude, there's like <laughs> abc or dea <laughs> Dude, nope. Not nope. allowed in. There's security uh, at the nope, door. Because nope, what, those nope. ro what they're rolling in oh, with. Oh, man. And not only that, the, 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 the blunts that they're rolling is just incredible to see. It is it is sex, drugs, and hip-hop. And uh, But, yeah, no, I can't. You know, this was a great break to come up here for the day. Uh, just because I've been. Less I've than been, 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, they have, like, 20 songs. And I still got, like. I think about seven or eight songs to do, so I'm gonna oh, head back right back and not sleep for four days. <laughs> Finish Work, it up. Worked the whole way up on the yeah, way. Yeah, man. Oh, it's amazing. It was the best three hours that I've had in a long time, uninterrupted. No one's like, "Hey, man, you hear that?" No, it's just it's great. So man. let me go through uh, at MannyMariquin.com. I mean, this shit isn't even real. <laughs> I've been Kanye busy. Kanye West, Selena Gomez, FKA Twigs. 
I mean, Ellie Goulding. I'm, I'm skipping people right now. I'm only going to A-listers. Marshmallow mm. with Bastille. I mean, this isn't even right. Leon Bridges, he's mm-hmm. one of the biggest stars in the world right yeah, now. Yeah, man. We're going to go see him at Bonnaroo. Oh, Ex amazing. Ambassadors, Foster the People, Alicia Keys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pepper, are you hearing this shit? <laughs> Come imagine, on, Pepper. <laughs> imagine Dragons, uh, Chromio. I mean, uh, they're DJ playing at uh, Bottle Rock this year, too. Demi Lovato, are you going to go? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. All right, we got to hook up there then. Let's do it. I'll get us. Well, you don't need me. Shit. I mean, look, you just walk around, with this, <laughs> walk around with a fucking sandwich board around your neck saying this is who the fuck I am. I get it anyway. Yeah. I mean, this is crazy. Uh, I've, been, I've been I mean, busy, man. You know, I love. I still love what I do. Most people don't yeah, even. Post Malone and Eminem and Kesha. It doesn't <laughs> even stop. <laughs> Call it with Rihanna. Brother. Yeah, man. Holy been busy, you know, like. Hence the bags on the eyes, but so talk to me about the journey, real quick. So Guatemala, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. It, similar to Let's our take it from the top, yeah. So uh, born in Guatemala at the time there was a civil war, thirty year civil war. My mom, I was nine. My mom uh, was a nurse, so you know it was terrible. Some of the things I saw as a kid, no, no kid should ever see. Uh, mom was smart. She got my sister and I out of. Guatemala told us we're going on vacation to LA. We're going to go into Disneyland <laughs> and we're packing some shit in the room. We're like, wait, we're coming back right, you know, we're coming back next week. Ah, just in case we want to stay longer. It's California. There's a lot of sun over there. We landed on the, you know, got on the Pan Am 747, landed at LAX. F- first meal was Chinese food, which I'd never had before. So obviously, as you can hear, I- English is my second language. So I didn't know anything. So, we never went back. My mom, we, we got how, political how asylum. You know, we got here. How old were you? Nine. My sister was uh, 11, 10 and a half, 11. We, uh, you know, we landed and we got political asylum and never went back. Wow. And, uh, so we're still on vacation. Where are yeah. you? I'm still on vacation. You no, still got some shit in that room. <laughs> yeah, so I, I got to go back. Uh, so where do you go first? So we, uh, you know, we get LA. here. L.A., Hollywood, Hancock Park. We get here. My mom's best friends married an amazing Argentine man that had a, a bunch of restaurants, and they were pretty well off. So we stayed at their guest house for a few months. Mom got a job, and pretty soon we're off. So mom's friend was pretty hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mom's know, friend was good looking, married. She her. was amazing, amazing, amazing woman. Actually, she's they're still best friends. Oh, how cool, yeah. man! So. You go to uh, high school in L.A.? High school in L.A., went to Hamilton High, which is a music academy. So my first, you know, listen, I grew up in some, you know, some pretty not the greatest neighborhoods in L.A., which I'm glad I did because it, you know, taught me a lot. Um, So I needed to get out of the neighborhood. So uh, I started playing drums when I was about 10, 11. My family, you know, very musical family. Everyone plays something. You know, Latin families get together every weekend, and there's always food, booze, and freaking instruments, right? That's it. Uh, So I would see all my cousins. You know, they all picked up an instrument. So I liked drums. I picked it up, uh, went to a school. uh, Well, went to uh, JB, John Burroughs in L.A. Uh, There's a guy, James Burke, comes in, um, tells us that there's this great school opening up. Um, and we should go audition for it. So I was like, man, this is the ticket out of the hood. <laughs> it wasn't really the hood. It was Hollywood. Yeah. Um, make it. I audition. Uh, I'll never forget the guy right in front of me goes up. <laughs> he closes the door. All I hear is this. Bruh, bruh, bruh. Uh, Fuck. I, I guess never, I know I who ne- this cat is. Yeah, I'd never heard of that before. I'm like, what the? Fuck. Paul McCartney's guy, right? Yeah, so it's like he comes out. I'm like, man, was that you playing in there? He's like, yeah, how was that? I'm like, it was fucking amazing. So he killed my drumming career at that very moment. Immediately. Immediately. And he's been with McCartney so for a long time. So it's Abel Boreal Jr. He's, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. he's like the guy, whenever you see McCartney, is like he's like his brother. I mean, he once, Paul said that he felt more, he was more of a Beatle to him than Ringo, which 
you know, of course, caused a lot of con- <laughs> yeah, a couple problems. But that's how that's yeah. this guy's the one of the best drummers alive, and he thankfully was in front of me and killed my career as a drummer. So when we, uh, I thankfully made it, and uh, we had to check the boxes like your major and minor. And I'm like, fuck, I couldn't stop thinking about Abe. I'm like, I'll never be that good. So I'm like going down the boxes and it's like, there's a <laughs> box for music production. I'm like, fuck it, check. And that led me to the studio. So we had a studio at, you know, in production class. Uh, there was five kids in the whole class uh, from Monday through Friday. Only the fucking nerds <laughs> yeah, chose yeah. that box, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right? You were like, like cause, I'm like, it's Fuck this! I'm going. And now they all want to check that box. They all, they all. Are you, are you kidding me? You got to remember back then. Okay, so wait. wait so we, uh, I get into uh, production class. We have a, um, w- which was amazing at the time. We had what's called Simpty Track, which is Pro Tools nowadays. Uh, but this was, you know, I was 15, 1987, 86, 87. Didn't exist. So we uh, had drum machines, DX7s, and all the reel to reel and. Yeah. Um, so we, uh, you know, we would compose a song, do, uh, you know, Friday we play it for each other. That was it. That was, that was a fucking year. And one time my, with still a great friend, David Sears, he runs the, uh, Grammy foundation for the Academy. He, uh, listens to it. He puts his headphones on, listens to the song I worked on and he goes, now you got to mix it. I'm like, fuck, what do you mean mix it? What does that mean? I thought the world was going to hear my masterpiece, right? Like, no, no, come here, I'll show you. Takes me over to the board. We got a reel to reel. And he explains the mixing process to me. And from that moment on, I'll I, I'll never forget that that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I'm like, wait, I can change emotion and like the feeling of a song with frequencies. And I'm not even adding an instrument or, or arranging it or lyrics or none of that. And that's when I understood the power of frequencies. And that's really what we do. I mean, this that's what I mean, life is about, right? Yeah. But but that fucking blew my mind. To this day, it blows my mind how I can manipulate emotion. You've made a lot of people irrelevant, unfortunately. Yeah. A lot of musicians, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Going back even when the Bee Gees were doing those splices, yeah. when you watch that documentary. Oh, that was, yeah, that they was make so the, good. It's way so, ahead of its time, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But making drums. Some of those Pink relevant. Floyd records where oh, they like God. the way they loop things yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. So I, you know, at the time, the, the stereotype was, you know, the guy in the studio, long hair, ponytail, cigarette hanging, you know, white guy, older white guy mixing records. Yeah. So for some, a, you know, a watermelon 15 <laughs> year old kid that just learned how to speak English a couple of years before. I didn't have anyone to look up to. Yeah. So it was one of those like leap of faith. I didn't even, you know, I didn't even know if there was water in the pool. I just fucking dove in head first and, 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 you know, it was the best thing uh, that ever happened. Cause it's, it's really amazing what you can do in the studio, man. You can create something out so of nothing. So would you say the Sears cat was your guy? Was that? Oh, um, was beyond. And, yeah. A nice beyond. I mean, here's a kid that I lost my dad. So I didn't grow up with him. He passed away when my mom was pregnant with me. So I needed that f- kind of father figure. And some of the dudes I was hanging out with were not <laughs> good. Were not a good influence. So he came at the perfect time in my life. And he, to this day, he's one of my best friends, you know, because uh, I got it. So, so then when we were, uh, when I graduated from high school, we, we were pretty good musicians. We used to beat every school in town to the point where when I graduated the next year, we started, uh, when I was a senior, we started competing with junior colleges because LAUSD was like, fuck, you guys took all the great yeah. musicians. So it's not fair. So they all gave us scholarships. So where do you go from there? So I asked David, I'm like, Hey, these schools are interested in me, but I want to be a mixer. Which one do you think I should go- pick? And he looks at him. <laughs> he's like, none of them go get a job at a studio, go fucking make the best co- uh, cup of coffee. And that's what you do. And that's exactly what I did. So can you imagine going to your mom, right? That still doesn't speak speak perfect English, (laughs) saying, I'm not going to, you know, I got some scholarships, but I'm going to go fucking get, you know, make the best cappuccino. Has probably never had a kid in college, similar to me. My my son just graduated the first gents and never graduated from college. Mm. 
you're telling your mom, yeah, I got these five full rides. Yeah. I'm going to take a <laughs> like, pass. Fuck, and, can you believe uh, that? I mean, my kid, I don't know how I would react. You know, long story short, um, got my, you know, the lucky break and one after another after another. And and now she's she says it's the best decision I've ever made. <laughs> so she's still with us. Yeah, she's still with us. Living where? Living in L.A., Silver Lake or Atwater, you know, right around there. But we uh, man, listen, there was a passion I had and I still have like for music. I, I love without. I mean, it's I'm just. Still passionate about it more than ever. So actually. your job's a lot like mine in the sense that you and I could have never played for the Dodgers. That we could have done everything we could do, mm-hmm. and we weren't we weren't playing for the Dodgers. We were not playing for the Lakers. We're in a trainable, teachable job, which most jobs are. I love it when winemakers think that they're like, uh, you know, people think, oh, he's an artist. It's like. No, <laughs> we, you and I do two jobs you could teach a lot of people to. The difference is no different than any other business. Who's the best tobacco grower, cigar right, roller? Right. Who's the best, who makes the best tequila? You're just better, right? I could teach anybody to make wine. Mm-hmm. You could take teach, you got 100 kids you've taught how to mix. Mm-hmm. Then it's where it gets special. Who's going to, who A is just then better who puts in the work yeah man and then a little bit of it comes like with me and my palate and my my view of a farm and what i see i think is probably just a little bit different but we're both in teachable jobs and we i'd love to think that Mm -hmm. you know i'm this freak but i'm not because (laughs) i can teach someone to do what i can do (laughs) and i do it pretty quick you're special freak (laughs) then will they take it to that next level and that's what you did hey we're gonna take a quick break we're gonna pop another bottle and um we're going to get into when you get into the studio yeah, yeah. and you get a hard on and see your first big wig yeah, walk yeah, through man. the door. Who's yeah. your first big clown? I want to know that. Yes. And then I got to hear some stories. Bro. Yeah, so uh, yeah. stick around. We'll be right back. Popping Corks is a podcast sponsored by My Favorite Neighbor Wines. Visit MyFavoriteNeighbor.com and use the promo code Popping Corks for complimentary shipping on any order of three bottles or more. That's a phenomenal deal, by the way. And don't forget to follow us at my favorite neighbor on Instagram. All right, man. Welcome back. Popping corks. Uh, Eric Jensen with the man, Manny Marroquin. This, this, <laughs> I mean, Manny, I, and, and I don't look at you like that because you and I are in a circle of like wine guys and you in a restaurant, which we'll, uh, I want to know about. But when I look at this shit, now all of a sudden, like, I, you scare me a little bit. Like, I'm nervous. <laughs> like, man, I can't carry Get this. I can't carry this fucking <laughs> luggage. He's in my guest house. Is the thread count high enough? <laughs> I mean, was the temperature exact? Is the butler uh, over there? Has he showed listen, up? This guy's been, you're being very humble, but that guest house is freaking amazing. So stop it. <laughs> all right. So we just, uh, we popped a new 19 Ripper, yeah. 100% Grenache. Yeah. I'm excited about 19 Vintage, man. Really, mm. really excited. So, so strawberries, red fruit. Um, Ripper uh, is a list wine. We don't distribute that wine, so it, it's one of those wines you got to come here to the new winery, which I got to show you before you build because you're out early. Oh, man. And you got to see the new place because you have to you've been it. to the old place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw shack. you were building. Yeah, yeah, I saw the plans. You showed me the plans okay. actually. All right. All well, right. we saw the uh, the the cave. Yeah. Which was, it was finished? Like, no, no, no. It was about fifty percent done, and it looked so impressive at fifty percent. I can't imagine like. 100%. We'll run down there uh, before you guys go. Yeah, so yeah. Manny booked a dinner reservation <laughs> in San Luis, which isn't which is great. But he's been on the road all day. If this is Saturday and he's staying three days, you got to for sure go to San Luis. San Luis is just such a baller city. It's It's just right by the ocean. It's like a mini Boulder or one of these Madison, Wisconsin. It's probably 13, 14 blocks of bars and restaurants. Yeah, man. Good-looking people and just happy people and cool people. And uh, uh, Maxie over here is a junior uh, engineering little freak. Uh, <laughs> Pepper, you live south, right? You live over that way. Um, so we got Grenache in the glass. Mm, We're drinking it. out of our uh, soapy walls, which I love. Mm. A little less expensive than the Zalto. Mm. This is what we're pouring in the winery at. 
This is dangerous. Manny, Very let's dangerous. Manny, let's uh, Guatemala, L.A. Yeah, man. Pouring coffee. Yeah. Scrubbing floors. Whatever you gotta <laughs> yeah, do. A couple yeah. radio station jobs. Yep, yep, yep. Or at least one. One, yeah, yeah. That was a summer job. I was assistant to the program director at KKGO, which was a jazz station. Yeah. I used to yeah. get up at five in the morning, ride my bike from Hancock Park all the way, all the way down to. West LA, it was amazing. It was great people. That was, was pre uh, ninety four seven. The wave coming yeah, yeah, to town, the wave. And yeah, taking yeah, over. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, well, by the time I left, it became uh, a classical station because the wave killed it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I grew up in LA. Uh, what part? I uh, San Dimas, so oh, yeah, yeah. further east, yeah. San Gabriel That's, Valley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, in the old days, you could actually see girls LA were from at. my house. No, no, there's zero <laughs> cute girls in San Dimas. Oh, West Covina, that's what it was. Yeah, West Covina had some hot girls. We used yeah, to ride yeah. our bikes over there to the mall uh, or take like seven bus transfers over there. But in those days, you just left in the morning. You got kicked out in the morning at 8, mm-hmm. and then you had to be back by the streetlights. Yeah. And your mom always give you a dime. <laughs> dime Pay phone. Shit, man. That's right. Not a dime bag, right. bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, get your mind out of fucking weed. I got joints in there if you need them, by the way. In the cigar humidor. But... You got a dime to call home if there was an emergency, but that wow. was it. That you was found it. a payphone. You stopped ten times on the way somewhere. You get some day old bakeries everywhere, so you get a thing of Twinkies. Yeah, man. Pull over, get in a fight with your buddy. Oh yeah. You'd see a jump on your bike. You fucking roll, <laughs> take a couple jumps. You might even see a swimming pool. Uh, you know, if you had your skateboard, you drop the movie. In. I see it. I see it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so. What's your first enormous break? And then from that enormous break, why don't you take me into who's the first badass that walks through the doors and you're doing everything you can to keep your hands out of your pants? <laughs> well, that's tough, but um, I'll never forget the first time producers started calling, right? Because I used to, uh, you know, when I got a job at Enterprise, Enterprise Studios in LA, I was, fuck, I was, not 18 go in i'm like man i want he's like all right you you get hired as a runner you make coffee mop the floors like you said sherpa so we (laughs) yeah so we um i would always go in the studio you know the studio manager tom brown the tom let me in coach put me in put me in i was like nobody nobody nope 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 you gotta pay your dues all right cool so for about three months, every fucking day, I would go into to his office. One day, I was making a cappuccino. He walks in. He goes, "Hey, buddy, how well do you know the the, uh, the SSL?" And you know, they're the uh, the big boards with the knobs and buttons, and they look like spaceships, right? I'm like, "Oh, fuck, I got this." He's like, "All right, cool, cool. I'm gonna put you in the session." I'm like, "Great." Now I had been there three months, and people had been there three years, and not, you know, not had not gotten a chance to get into the room. So I get in the room, and I always knew I had to become friends with the tech. The tech is the guy that knows everything, right? And we, I buy him a six-pack of beer every Friday, right? So I get in, and I, I don't know. I don't even know where the volume knob is, right? I knew nothing about this thing. I'm like, <laughs> fuck, what do I do, right? I'm like, okay, this is, the, this is like the Matrix, the blue or red pill my honest and tell him that I don't know shit or I just try to bullshit my way through it. Right. The guys walk in, the clients walk in. I'm like, I'm so nervous. Right. I'm like, I'm like 19. So the the engineer walks up, he introduces himself and I introduce myself and I immediately say, all right, man, this is the deal. (laughs) I don't know shit about this room. Uh, I don't know. The, the the patch bay, which that's where you patch all the install the uh, the gear, and like I don't know anything about this room. This is the first time as an assistant engineer. Uh, I'm really nervous, but I got to tell you something, man. I will be the best assistant engineer if you give me a chance. And I point to the phone. I'm like, you see that phone? If we get in trouble, uh, gosh, I forget. Uh, Dan, Dan, the tech will be here in ten seconds because he knows this is the first time in the room. So I just ask you to give me a chance. That's it. That's it. And if you don't want, if you want an experience, 
engineer assistant let me know and we'll try to get you one and he looks at the artist which is a pretty big artist he goes man this guy got some balls <laughs> this kid got some balls no we're keeping you around bro and that was it these guys came back so many times and it was we always laughed about how nervous i was and and pretty soon i kind of learned the art of assisting engineering you know and and then uh, we had a lot of Japanese clients at the time, and they all didn't want to pay the big bucks, so they give us a few hundred bucks to do these rough mixes, right? And uh, and I learned on doing Japanese records, which is the best. Like technically, you know, Japanese is so sibilant, so to control the S's, it's really hard. So today, to control S's, is an art form in, in itself. So talk about the best school right of learning on you japanese fired, records yeah, yeah. so you had a flamethrower yes, oh man know. it was it was incredible so from that point on the next story is how do you then go from being an assistant engineer to an engineer right oh, or a mixer so uh <laughs> the classic story i'm an assistant engineer i'm ready to like spread my wings i'm 20 years old at the time the classic story where the engineer is so fed up, he's got a date, he wants to leave at 10, and the producer wants to keep going, right? He takes off, he looks at me and goes, hey man, you wanna do a rough mix? And that's what I was waiting for. I was, put me in coach, that was it. Call, you know, I'm suited up, ready to play. Puts me in, I start mixing the song around midnight. And I remember six in the morning, I wake this guy up. I'm like, hey, man, I'm ready. Now, granted, I never mix a song on the desk before. You know, it's an assistant. You just patch shit and yeah. like bring faders up for the uh, engineer. So I start doing this we are talking mix. to motherfuckers like they know what a fader is, by the way. Fader's I mean, a volume. Just, <laughs> okay, I, 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 I'm nodding my head like, I'm like, going like this. I'm like, nodding my head. I don't yeah, know what the fuck he's talking about. It's a VCA followed by the 33609. So a fader is a volume. So 6 a.m., who are you waking up? The cat that went on the date? The uh, No, the producer. He's gone. The engineer's gone. Gone. The producer, right? The label guy, too. So wake him up. I'm ready to play it. Hit play. I'll never forget he's listening. He's got his eyes closed. I'm like, oh, this motherfucker's falling asleep. And he goes, okay, cool. Picks up the phone, calls his partner in New York. He goes... <laughs> Man, I don't know who the fuck this kid is. They call me kid. He's like, but we found someone to mix the whole album. <laughs> I was like, yes. I mean, come on, oh, talk about hitting a home shit. run, right? Well, the again, album I never came out, by the way, but it was the most amazing moment because it gave me this confidence yeah. to what I call the third step into yeah. getting into mixing. Yeah. So I got a call to do uh, with the guy, the, this one producer I kept working with. We go to New York and work with Whitney Houston. So it was a, a song called Heartbreak Hotel with Whitney, Kelly Price, and Faith Evans. And we go there, we re I recorded it, and, and I mixed it. And it was the first time I mixed a, a mega star, right? And that's the first time that everyone started calling. Were oh, you ever with her? Oh, hell yeah. I mean, I saw some stuff that I sh I'm not going to talk about. Probably I'm yeah, not right? seeing. Yeah, yeah. So R.I.P. She it, it was, was a legend, yeah, yeah, yeah. man. It was at the time. It was It was not the greatest of times, if you if you know what I mean. But yeah, Bobby was a little Bobby bit was, of an yeah, enabler. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobby was, was there. Uh, Bobby was definitely there. He was sweating a lot. But, uh, you know, it really gave me, I remember getting the confidence to be able to mix someone like a Whitney Houston. And then I, I don't know if it, wh wherever it landed in the charts, that was the moment where I'm like, oh shit, I might have done something cool here. And I, I can't say my career just took off. You know, it never really took off. It was just kind of a gradual climb. You know, and I, I'm thankful for that because it's, you know, you meet a lot of like assholes in this industry where careers just go way up and they don't know how to handle it. Right. Well, for me, it was really good that it just kind of, man, I just had to work my ass off and. Uh, I always said one song at a time. You're you're only as good as your last hit, and you're only as good as your client. I think you have to take that same attitude today. We, uh, I make wine that way. Mm -hmm. Like the, the what makes me so upset about these l legacy houses, especially in France, is man. Some of these guys have been on a twenty run and making dog shit that they charge a thousand bucks for. 
And you're like, I'm like, Booker, if I don't like it, we just don't release it. It's just we're not going to release it. Or we'll scale it down from maybe 500 cases to 100 cases if it's not perfect. And I still believe in you have to prove yourself every day. So you are always, and even today, listen, if Albert Pujols came over to the Dodgers, uh, you and I are both Dodger fans. It, I mean, he's not hitting great, but he's getting some key hits. Man, he, got, done a, he o- got a an RBI, the first at bat with Dodgers. Exactly. So. And so, you know, if he went over his first 22, they're, they're going to cut him too, and it's going to go out, you know, unceremoniously. So I, I think the great ones, well, you watch LeBron every day. Um, regardless of your thoughts on the cat, man, he – he goes out every day at his he's age. A Laker, Tom so I love Brady. Him. He's <laughs> these guys still think they have to prove themselves yeah. every day, and that's what I love, and that's what I dig about you. You're still judging yourself, not on that, and you didn't want that skyrocket because no, that no. rocket ship in this business eats you up. It's man. like you, know, you work with these like, cats. It's that, like short lasting bubble gum, right? You spit it right out. You well, know? you've also worked with these cats. You and I are sitting here drinking wine. You've worked with these cats that have lost their right to drink wine yeah, yeah, and yeah. anything right. else. That's that, right. It, you know, there's nothing they can do because yeah. too fast, too much. Yep. Uh, hey, yeah, we're going to yeah. take a quick break. Now we're uh, going to move into your clients, That's working like with them. We don't need you to talk any shit, wine. but we're going to look for a story or two. And uh, we're going to grab another wine. We'll, uh, we'll be right back. Popping Corks is a podcast sponsored by My Favorite Neighbor Wines. Visit myfavoriteneighbor.com and use the promo code POPPINGCORKS for complimentary shipping on any order of three bottles or more. That's a phenomenal deal, by the way. And don't forget to follow us at myfavoriteneighbor on Instagram. All right, we're back. Manny Mariquin, Eric Jensen, I got Pepper Daniels, Slow Legend, Max (laughs) Kruger, Cal Poly, Slow Legend. The young buck, the young fella, the young Manny Mariquin. Eric, you're um, like, let me just get, let me just say, you're so good at this. Fuck. Come on, man. Congrats. Man. I've been so bad at this, but you know what I do? I so know. this whole show is based on the shit we just talk about when we drink. So if, yeah, yeah, if yeah. you and I were chilling by the fire, all I talk about no filter right? is yeah, just yeah, yeah. We, we pop bottles. And I called you in the car and said, hey, what do you want to drink? And you go, man, champagne sounds really good. So if you had said uh, an old-fashioned, I'd, I'd, I'd have stirred you an old-fashioned. If you said, shake me something, I'd have shaken you something. So cheers, brother. Uh, we just opened the new 19 Tempranillo. Um, we're doing Booker tonight because Manny, I didn't have Realm, and I forgot to call no, no, Scott I'll Becker and Benny. Doing Booker from my point of view. It is definitely my best, my favorite wine here. And that's why I'm here. That's why I made the drive. And not only because you're good looks, but uh, I fucking love Booker. So Manny's that, looking. Manny, Manny don't need much, but he's looking for something, man. Because I, yeah. So Tempranillo. I'm looking at some good wine. Spanish man. grape, oh, bigger. So good. Yeah, Delicious. Tempranillo is oh, fucking God. good. And Tempranillo and Paso is just so baller. And we didn't have a name for it, so we just called it Tempranillo. But mm-hmm. Tempranillo, you know, these wines are... 75 ish bucks. We'll get to our $30 new 19 Harvey and Harriet, which I made to compete with the Coca Cola, the sweet wines that have taken over the world. But uh, so, Manny, you and Terry, your wife is in the biz. And it's funny, before we get into Terry, me you and Pepper were talking. And I look at hospitality as a circle of the music business, the restaurant business. The, the, the wine business, the salespeople that are selling wine, like that, that are out there, my reps uh, uh, from Southern Wine and Spirits that are selling uh, uh, Harvey and Harriet or My Favorite Neighbor, whatever, my, my, any of my team at Constellation, the restaurant people, we're all in the same. You know this because you own a restaurant. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and we're all big into music. Yeah. The music people own restaurants, the ones that haven't lost their right to drink because <laughs> you know, of various things like just about everybody on my wall uh uh they're all into wine now they're all foodies it's yeah. like so i that whole entertainment hospitality business is really one business it's just the fucking greatest business in the world um real quick terry agent yep manager manager excuse yep. me yep. 
Um, how many years? Gosh. And how many years have you been married? We've been married 22. So basically yeah. the same yeah. as me and my yeah. wife. Yeah. 97-ish. Yeah. Maybe I'm 23. Yeah. I, yeah. She doesn't I'm, listen to the show. So 20, she doesn't it doesn't know. even matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. 20 plus, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so been the manager for maybe 10, 8. She's yeah. in the kitchen working, yeah, drinking Dom Perignon. So. Yeah, I know. She, she's got a couple. Of, uh, one of her actresses that booked a couple things to, on the way here, so she's taking care of that. Follow your passion. Oh, man, that's why people that are great at what they do, they love to go to work every day. And I was telling you, I want my daughter to not go to college. Man, My daughter's yeah. a freak. Just whatever she wants to do, mm-hmm. if she goes, she's one of those. Yeah, man. Your son was at Cal Poly and then COVID hit. And, yep. and he went back and said, this is what I want to do. And Pivot. he's following yeah, man. which is awesome. My son's going to New York this summer. Restaurants. So yeah. you... We're, we're foodies, Where? man. How? It's the worst decision any of us can <laughs> it's get. Like the- I get pitched <laughs> daily. Bro, man, I need a partner. And you're like, a fool and his money yeah. soon goes oh, separate yeah. ways. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. I love the it's business. The I thing, love the thought right. of walking in the restaurant. You know, Everybody knows me. I always yeah, get a table. Yeah. They know my cocktail. They bring it over. Then they know my champagne or yeah. wine. And then all of a sudden you find out, you know, you're working on a 10% profit oh, margin. If you're, yeah, if you're, <laughs> if you're lucky, yeah, yeah, if you're lucky. So high what, volume, low margins, and there's a lot of room for error. So for me, it was never about getting into the, uh, the uh, food and beverage industry. But so I have a studio called Larrabee Studios. Um, it, we celebrated 50 year anniversary two years ago. Uh, original owner was Carol King. We're the biggest studio, yeah, yeah, the biggest studio on the w- west of the Mississippi. We, uh, uh, we have seven studios, twenty thousand square feet. It's, it's uh, honestly, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. You have to come see it when you're in town. So um, there's a restaurant two doors down that I would, you know, ear break. We'd go have a glass of wine. So uh, at one point, you know, I knew the owners. They, uh, long story short, we uh, I ended up taking over. But uh, not because I wanted to get into the restaurant game, but I always wanted a live music venue because I rec- recorded music. I feel like I've done so many records. I wanted a, maybe a new challenge. So um, I wanted to build a content creator. So to call it a restaurant, I mean, it is a restaurant, but it's it's way more than the restaurant. It's really, I would say, maybe a supper club of 2022. Uh, but it's not even a supper club because when I think of supper club is jazz, you know, but they that do, was a badass error though, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and I would have loved oh, that yeah. error uh, to roll into the big band. But think about this though. Out of the big, uh, yeah, but think about coupe. this. How about we can do that now? Yeah. Like, but it doesn't have to be jazz. It could be anything. It could be, you know, Terrence Martin and Robert Glasper playing and you're like, fuck, that's like Herbie Hancock, the, yeah. the new Herbie yeah, yeah, Hancock. Yeah. So uh, for me, it was about getting a place. Uh, we literally built a studio, a giant studio, and put a restaurant in it, but which is also connected to my studio two doors down via fiber optic cable. So anything that we, anybody that plays there, we can record it at a super a high res, really high quality, best microphone. So it's basically, you know, and it, and it grew from like, when people can, uh, come see me at the studio, they always want to hear something. And I'll play in whatever I'm working on. And it, let me tell you, for that three, whatever, three and a half minutes, it changes their lives. Like you can almost see their soul kind of get out of their body, you know? And it's like to see that firsthand over, I mean, I'm, I've been there for 23 years in the same room. I see it over and over again. I was like, fuck, wouldn't it be cool to have more than my room? My, one of my studios is not too big. We can fit maybe 10 people. Can you imagine doing it in front of 100 people? Yeah. So that was really the initial idea. Like, how can I get 100 people to listen to what I am privileged to listen to every single day of my life? When I'm in the studio, I listen to music. It, it'll never sound that good ever again. Yeah. You know, so that's like... That's a privilege. So, so how can I share that? It? How can I share that? What's that? How many nights a week is it? So we're open. We're, we're about to reopen June sixteenth. Yeah, uh, we've been shut Sorry, down brother, for man. fourteen. Just devastating. You know, it, for me, is like I saw an opportunity. Like I have no business in the restaurant business, but when we shut down, I 
literally went to school for a year and learned every try to learn as much as I could about the business. You know, mm-hmm. look, even if it's a ten percent margin, I'm I'm cool with that. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good uh, because I really really want to showcase some artists to some you know people that don't even that wouldn't know who that artist is. So imagine just on a Thursday night, let's go to Verse, and you go to Verse, you have an amazing meal, amazing wine, and you don't know who's on stage, but that's the whole point. Because by the time you leave, you're gonna be like you're gonna be a fan, because we're curating every artist to be someone that that will change your life. Like like when I play some in the studio, and it could be just a jazz band playing, but we're getting the baddest jazz band that night. Yeah. You know, so it's so it's really more about an experience than just a so restaurant. June fifteenth, you're gonna reopen. June sixteenth, hopefully. 16th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, LA opens up June 15th. Better, yeah. man. LA is No, no, no. LA has destroyed small business. I'm not happy with it. I'm a I'm a LA guy. Yeah, man. LA is my It my, was yeah, it was it was it was a shame. Um look, hopefully we uh, you know, hopefully they make it back with some federal help, you know. So you open uh you'll be open what nights? Well, uh, Monday uh Tuesday through Saturday. Oh shit. Yep. yep. So you're only taking the Sunday Monday off. Yep. Sunday and am Monday. Am I gonna see live music every night, or is sometimes it just your stuff that you know? It de- it depends. We're gonna try to have live music every night. That's a tough one. Man. That's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. But you know what we want is maybe once a week there will be one night where we're gonna leave that night where there's gonna be surprise guests. And the, nice. listen, the studio's two doors down. Comedy, so, comedy you know? store type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, you don't know who's gonna come on. Well, you know, the yeah. original idea was like imagine like. Comedians can go anywhere and test material, right? Like, Sam, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Dice Clay used to take the two forty-five a.m. slot oh my God. bomb on all his new stuff. He wanted the worst spot mm-hmm. in front of five so he could work his kinks out. Exactly. So I mus- musicians it, don't have that. If you think about it, in L.A. I mean, L.A. is the music music capital of the world, right? Especially now, more than any place. New York used to be when I was growing up in the industry. Not anymore. So L.A. is the mecca, and we don't have anything like this. I'm like, fuck, I want to go out and see some amazing up-and-coming emerging artists, or I want to be in a place where all of a sudden John Mayer and Alicia Keys get up on stage and do or you know, do a couple songs, you know? And having the studio next door, being in you know, five minutes from the Hollywood Bowl, Having my brand, the studio brand. I mean, I forgot to mention he worked with John Mayer too. That was just. (laughs) But there's seventy others that I forgot that are you know maybe even bigger than uh, John. Bro, that is the shit. I went into a local place downtown Amsterdam the other night, and there was a trio, and I wasn't fucking leaving, man. We ordered two bottles of wine. Me and Juan. Juan filmed the whole damn thing and sent it to Beckett, (laughs) his boy, uh, Juan Mercado, good friend of ours, baller ass wines. Uh, starting a new Paso project, but we're sitting in there and like, holy shit! The Amazing, trio, right? the stand-up yeah, basses yeah, yeah. jam. It's like live music again. Yeah, I'll do anything. And so you know, this sounds like the greatest concept. Be, so to add to that, right? So so the thing about if you think about it, we're in the uh, AirPod uh, generation, right? Where yeah, you yeah. hear everything with that. Your speaker is that big. Yeah. Fuck that. I mean, imagine when you go to when you go in the studio and the, you have bigger speakers than that, the emotion, I mean, the, the how you feel about what's coming out of those speakers, you can't duplicate it in those little guys, you know? So so imagine this, the restaurant has a full immersive audio experience with 60 speakers, state-of-the-art sound. I want you to listen to anything that, that's on stage in a way you never heard it before because that's what music is intended to be, how it's intended to be listened to in a good system because that will change your life. And I, I go through that every single day. I know you life. don't want to be a douche. This was not a pimp for this. I, I was that? Just, <laughs> But you have to tell us, what's the website reservations? Because this, I mean, I see Pepper over there. He's fucking <laughs> typing in every single item of what you're saying because, like, we go to L.A., me and my daughter – we love going to LA and that's our gig, man. Yeah. Like she is a freak about music. Oh, you gotta come. On all music. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. 
You know, so, she's yeah. been to Migos multiple times. Oh, yeah. You know, she's been to Paul McCartney. Oh, she's been to Elton John. I like your but daughter. Then she's also yeah, been to Post Malone multiple times. Yeah. And so that's what we do as a family. We travel to festivals, mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. events. What's I the love What's it. the website? It. Give, give us some info. Ver, June 16th, verse, we know, yeah. Verse dot L A. It's a uh, V-E-R. by studios V E R S E like verse in the poem or a song that dot L A. And uh, you know, I I love working with new artists like Post. I worked in Post from day one. Uh, Pink, Bruno Mars, Alicia Keys, Kanye. I've worked with all John, maybe not John Mayer, but. Uh, Lizzo and um, I mean there's so many artists that I work with from day one uh, and that to me but you work with John Mayer I, it I, just I, wasn't I, day I, one I, yeah I feel like I worked on one of his best albums Continuum which is honestly if I hadn't mixed it it still would be one of my favorite albums but uh, imagine going to verse with your daughter and you're sitting there and there's a rapper that goes on and his name is Corday. Like, if you don't know about Corday, he's, like, the most talented rapper right now. He just released something last night or yesterday, Friday, today, yeah. And uh, it's with Eminem. So Corday is, like, one of the most exciting new artists around, and he'll be are you are, are, are these cats all call you, or are you mining? Are you out there no, you making know, the, phone calls? No, no. At this point, like I always said, you, you're as good as your last hit, right? Yeah. At this point, thankfully, knock on wood, they they come to me. You know, they 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 see my discography. They some of their favorite artists are on there, or sometimes they'll listen. They'll look at a chart and be like, "Fuck, this is this is what you know. This is what I like. We got to get that guy." And my name happens to be on there, and they will just find me. You know, so it's not like, you know, thankfully they come to me now because you know I'm doing it for, you for a long time. This is <laughs> that sounded bad. Thank this you. This is fucking. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. guy's got the fight. Listen, I'm still in You're the You're good fight. for my ego, by the way. Guys, I'm still in the <laughs> fucking trenches with a flame that we're taking incoming and just battling. These guys, they just got people answering phones over here. <laughs> they got people answering phones. Wow, what do we got here? This, so this is 30 Woo! box, Harvey and Harriet, an ode to my parents. Mm. This is the brand new, just bottled uh, cab, Petit Bordeaux, Syrah, but 30 box. Bone dry, no sugar. Wait, I this is this. thirty bucks. Thirty bucks. No way. Uh, obviously, at your restaurant, the pricing is different. It's. I made it to go buy the. Glass I'm charging three hundred bucks for this at my restaurant. No, I'm you're sorry. not. No, man. This is a sixty dollar <laughs> bottle, motherfucker. I'm kidding. Yuki. This is the. This is the wine for the people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bro, you're from Guatemala. Guatemala. Watermelon. That. Like what? Like Guadalajara. Uh, <laughs> like the Cambay watered that shit out of bounds, but. I made this wine for people like my parents. I made it Beautiful. for people that couldn't afford these crazy prices. And this wine oh. is, it's just taken over because uh, wines at 30 bucks are generally shit. You know that. You're a wine guy, man. Oh You're a God. geek. But if you didn't, if I didn't tell you 30 bucks, I wouldn't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah you'd yeah, have yeah. been like, yeah. oh, man. So, uh, anyways, enough of my plug. Um, so, <laughs> you're now. Now you're just an order taker, but you still <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing, bro. You still live album to album. We're dropping Migos by Tuesday. Your heads well, on I gotta the be done planet. by Tuesday, yeah. and it's released yeah. on the night. Not not not, re- not dropped on yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, your uh, album to album, your heads on a platter. And these fuckers yeah. don't play, by the way. These Man, guys, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, you know the good thing. I mean, again, blessed enough to. Uh, I uh, I used to say I work f- with Le- from Leon Rhymes to Busta Rhymes because <laughs> I haven't been thankfully pigeonholed because in the industry you got you have a hit that's that's what you do right so for me as a mixer it's easy to get pigeonholed to do whatever alternative rock country whatever whatever it is but I've been blessed enough and I think that because I'm a music fanatic. Yeah. Uh, and I analyze everything I hear, I'm able to work from Leon Rhymes to Busta Rhymes. So I'm working with the Migos right now, where uh, I'm also working with Rosalia, which is one of my favorite artists right now. And I, I just mentioned my favorite rapper right now in Corday and yeah. and Golden and all these amazing, amazing artists. You're across the spectrum, like so very, which, which is, very which few is like people, yeah. Very few, but I... 
fucking love, love, love music. And I think part of part of it is they see that. They, when I'm in the studio, when I give them something back, I always say I put a little piece of my heart into everything I work so, on. So let's let's ask that question. What yeah, listen, I'm not I don't want to compromise you because I compromise people. <laughs> I, I generally like to get people drunk and then <laughs> open them up. Like Good a luck. Right down the chest. But someone like you, Shots. I can't I can't do that with. We'll write this book later. Um you and I'll talk about this uh uh over by the fire off air and no phones. It was with NDA sign, but what do you got any who is the ultimate pros pro and then do you got any stories and i don't, I don't need cocaine and strippers because i know you got those I, the <laughs> shit you see in a studio what <laughs> the shit you see in a studio is yeah. shit you don't get to see i got some else. gmail stories too by the way but yeah we'll leave those just for the crazy fire shit. Yeah, yeah. Gmail stories. All right, man. we'll take whatever you'll give us who is the who is doesn't who is on time, does is involved in every aspect. Yeah. Yeah, Who's yeah, the yeah. pros pro? Man, there's so many of them. Um, but a few that come to mind, we were, were doing, uh, what album was it? Uh, Diary of Alicia Keys. And uh, we started mixing in LA. Then we went to London, Amsterdam, Paris, New York. Uh, and I was going on, she she was on tour. So I followed her around mixing. I was a day ahead. So she would, you know, get to the studio, listen to the mix. and But I've never seen an artist work that hard and be that dedicated and, and amazing at the same, so graceful at the same time. Um, till this day, I don't know. I mean, there's very few artists that ma- can match that. So Alicia Keys is the ultimate fucking. She's a pro be beyond i mean i don't know she's an alien she so, goes on when, the show starts, <laughs> she's an when, when she's supposed to go on at a festival yeah. at eight she's on at eight so a pivot for one split second there's a go, there's an artist named john billion which is one of my favorite artists so check it out if you can so we did uh this album in the bahamas there's a great studio there so he him and i would sit here drink and talk about the album so he had a concept album, even though no nobody knows about the concept album. But this is what it is. He's he, imagine a, a galaxy far, far away, and uh, this uh, this planet um, is about teaching these kids how to come up with a perfect melody, right? So it's a school. It's a you know the grandmaster. You know the grand uh, 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 Stormzy from the UK, and basically when you're ready to graduate, you know like Pokemon, you know you get in a bowl and fucking throw you to Earth, right? You land on Earth and you're born as a human, right? And uh, and you're born as a, what we know as a legend today, and your job is to keep pers- you know just trying to find the perfect melody. You're tripping me out right now. I'm glad I'm not stoned right yeah, now. Yeah, this is great, this right? Is fucking, this, is, <laughs> this is amazing. This, this is different, man. This is so... This is why I'm not but doing But check this doing. out. <laughs> but it's so good if you think of it. So basically, our legends, like a Jimmy, uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix, he would be that one searching for... But you realize as a, as a mortal that that doesn't exist, and that's why they become legends. So go back to Alicia, right? When John was telling me the concept for his album, I'm like, oh, shit, there's so many artists I've been in the same room with for, you're just not from fucking Earth. (laughs) You're from that planet because there's no way, there's absolutely no way what you know would be from something you've learned. There's no fucking way. You learned that somewhere else or some other life, you know? And when you see this over and over and over again, you realize that it's bigger than you. It's much, much bigger than you. And without getting too deep, that's why we love certain music. I mean, you got them on the wall. That's why we love certain artists because they, they're out of, they're not from this planet. You know, teach anyone to sing. We talked about this. Yeah, you yeah. teach anyone to mix. Yeah. You teach anyone to make wine. Mm-hmm. But then there's that next level. Yeah. That you just. You know. But on what we do, look, there's a level Actually, of Actually, I take that back. You could not teach anybody to be 
John Lennon, no, Freddie you can't Mercury, teach Dave Grohl. No. And that's what my, Billy my thing was like. Keys, yeah, yeah. You, with, us, with us. You try all you want, ain't happening. With the non legends like us that we love what we do, you know, what happens is you can learn our, you know, the art form. We can get lucky. We can have amazing mentors. Um, but the only thing that gets us there is simple things that everyone talks about, like passion. Uh, Fucking work your ass off. Never what, give up. What you right? said that I never talked about, what the greatest thing you've said on this, well, you, everything's been pretty fucking baller, especially what you're telling me right now, tripping me out a little bit too at the same <laughs> time. But uh, you asked for your shot. You ha- I tell my boys this. I'm like, man, I can introduce you to everybody, but that's it, man. I'm not yeah, holding that's right. any that's right. motherfuckers' that's hand. Right. That's right. That's right. Get you will, in the room, and then you see what you can do with the room. What will you do? You got in that room, mm-hmm. and then you ran through the door. Yep. You looked at the dude and said, "Listen, man." And then at the end, they get on the phone with New York, and they say, "Man, we got this kid. He's gonna make so up." You got a shot, and you took it. I, I keep telling the boys. Life is about opportunities. What will you That's do right. with right. that opportunity mm-hmm. comes? What are you going to do in the moment? Are you going to know the moment's there? And 99% of the Earth's population doesn't even know the moment existed. Mm-hmm. And this isn't, we're not judging this on who makes the most money or anything like no, that. No, it has nothing everybody's to do with option, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's option and opportunity, everybody's opportunity could be different. Not everybody has to fucking think they want a helicopter or a fucking private jet in this, you know, uh, Instagram world. Everybody, did you have the opportunity and did you seize it? And were you able to then create and carve out that path for what we call everyday happiness and loving exactly what we do and knowing we're in the right place? You know, I always say um, the bus always comes around. So I... Same thing. Uh, I describe it as get on the bus, and if you're not ready, fuck, they're going to kick you off the bus. <laughs> but you know what? That always comes around. So it's preparation. So next time, hopefully you know when you've been kicked off the bus. you know. And then, and then when it comes around, hopefully you'll be better prepared. So I always say to, you know, like if I'm doing seminars or whatever, just make sure you learn from you keep moving forward right and you keep learning from maybe mistakes and you just keep learning so hopefully when the buzz opportunity comes back around you'll be mentally you know yeah, don't blame the guy that didn't give you the opportunity Absolutely. don't blame other people yeah, yeah. there's always going to be opportunities always they always so, keep coming so hopefully the next time it comes around you'll be ready for it right and that's it's as simple as that some people are knuckleheads they don't fucking want to learn well, yeah, a lot you know. of today's generation wants to blame everybody. Yeah. Well, I was a teacher. Well, I was the boss. Well, I was this guy. Mm-hmm. Instead of just saying, man, that shit was me. Yep. I'm the knucklehead. Yep. Yep. I, I, I need to take control. Mm-hmm. It ain't happening again. Yeah, I get that yeah. opportunity again, yeah. I, I'm grabbing and running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so, man, I could keep going with you forever. <laughs> I'm going to wrap up with... A little rapid fire. I haven't played rapid fire in a long time. So, now I can't play with you. I, there's too many questions. Wait, I can make it easy. <laughs> Favorite baseball team is the Dodgers, right? Come on. Dodgers. I can go backwards. Dodgers. Come, Come on, on man. Get it right. We're not, we're not in Guatemala. <laughs> it's more Mexico in LA, yo. Come on, it's man. It's LA, man. Everyone's like, not so, Guatemalan. Favorite album of all time. That I worked on? Or, no, no, uh, no. Of no, all no. time. But that's like having 10 kids. It's, too, it's impossible. Yeah, that's like having five kids and saying, which one's Can your you favorite? Can you give me two or three that come <laughs> to your mind quickly? Inner Vision, Stevie Wonder, um, Led Zeppelin IV, um, Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Wow. That was like, yeah. Can I add a few more? <laughs> Yeah, I hate when people ask you that. What's That's my, tough. That's what's your hard. favorite band? What's your favorite record? What's your favorite cocktail? That's just what I guess is like what comes to mind, right? Yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. Uh, favorite cocktail? Fuck, man. Listen, I, you know, I've been a wine fanatic from 
when I was maybe 14. Come on, so say, you say I'm not my, a uh, you know, Lynn, I wouldn't say cocktail, but you know, some of my favorite Bordeaux's are like Brunello's, but Lynch Bosch, uh, our honeymoon was in Bordeaux and we stayed at Lynch Bosch and still my, one of my favorite wines. But, I love Lynch Bosch. Yeah. Cocktails. You mentioned Brunello, I- Italy, of course. Do you drink yeah. much Italian wine? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real I, quick, because we never talked about <laughs> wine. Uh, we'll be fast on this. When did you get into wine? So remember the uh, my mom's best friend that married an Argentine, the hot chick that married yeah, the, yeah, the, the hot chick, oh, the, the, the fancy business Argentinian, slick back hair, <laughs> yeah. super tan, probably yeah, beard tan. shaped perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice I can see the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can oh, see yeah, the guy yeah, right yeah. now. He's gorgeous. It's a complete opposite, but let's stick with that. He uh, he would. Okay, so we had to have soup, salad, and a protein every night, sure. and then you had to have a little bit of wine and he would pour some water. So we had some rosé and, and he would talk about not, it, it, it's funny cause he wouldn't talk about the art of wine, but just the passion. And I, I got it really early when, when we lived with him. And from that moment on, I really became kind of obsessed with the art of just wine. So, uh, the first opportunity we had, we would go to, you know, we go to Napa, we go to Santa Barbara and, Everywhere but fucking Paso. Paso was not on the map, man. Not even on the map. <laughs> it's okay. I'm like a I'm like a Guatemalan. I'm at the bottom of the totem pole in Paso. Yeah, but yeah, and yeah. now yeah. all of a sudden these South Americans they look yeah, good like yeah, you. Yeah, They're yeah, all good yeah. looking. They're making all this loot. Paso is now on fire. Uh, this, you this, you this is you my found favorite it. region. And really. you'll end up owning here. It, it it's diverse. We got the ocean well, you twenty know, minutes yeah. away. Well, the only reason why I'm here is to you know so you can help me buy a piece of land here you know that's the only reason why i'm here not your good looks not your good none wine none zero. of that zero but uh <laughs> so we uh yeah so i've been into wine like, look look my favorite cocktail right now is a paloma you know just a paloma with mezcal instead you can't of come like, back after 10 well, minutes you, and then think about it like that Did you guys see that happen i mean i asked him that 10 minutes ago he didn't took me cat had his tongue but that's how much i drink i mean yeah i don't you know i tend to you know that like is wine. a great yeah, yeah. cocktail scene. It is. But it you is. know, so funny enough, sorry, funny enough, we're going through all our, our cocktail program right now. So we had a tasting two days ago and I tasted 20 different cocktails and we're doing another round next week. So I'm like, you got to get me in on this. Come on. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not, You're I'm only three hours away. I'm a mixologist. Yeah, yeah, three yeah, hours yeah, away. Yeah, I'm like yeah. 17 minutes in playing. <laughs> yes. San Luis flies direct. Baller. No, no, <laughs> no, you get, no, no, no. You guys no. heard that. Did you guys hear that? San <laughs> Louis uses United. <laughs> United. United in the Los Angeles is a 20 minute flight. Baller. Uh, but yes, LA's, come, come by. LA's come, cocktail come. scene's off the hook when they Incredible. When, oh, when they What reopen. I tasted and the way that, you know, he's, our guy's describing drinks. I mean, it's, it's an art form for sure. But life, I mean, this guy is like, other than that, he's not. Living in Hollywood Hills with a bunch of strippers <laughs> by pool because his mm. his wife is so beautiful and normal and she's a mom, right? Yeah. And he he lives a life like me, like you know. In another life, we could do that, but then we'd be in rehab and all that. <laughs> you you uh, are around food, mm-hmm. literally two doors down, music, mm-hmm. and within the food. Creating a cocktail program, you got badasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I it's the trifecta. I always you say don't even quad music and wine, right? Like well, the three passions. Forget about the cocktails, yeah, man. Yeah. You're killing people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, brother, man, I dig it. I, I can't. I can't thank you enough for coming. Thank you. I'm this excited. I was this able to bail you out of driving tonight. Uh, we're gonna get you an Uber. No, this is amazing. Because we've uh, and, and Terry's in there working. You know, so yeah, hopefully yeah, yeah. you guys are gonna take home the champagne. Chill out. You're going to Le Petit and I French restaurant, two Michelin star chef there, Amazing. who's a badass. That's a Julian incredible. Maceo. Um, his dad owned I'm La Venture. I'm happy to be here. Fuck, this is like incredible. Thank you, everyone. I mean, You'll be I, gone in a couple you, hours. I don't think you know this, but I'm I'm coming back every week, every Friday, and we're going to stay at Well, our boy Juan Mercado right? did the same thing, man. <laughs> Juan can stay in the cottage. I'll yeah. stay in the guest house. Uh, no, this is amazing. I'm a big fan of you. you. Not only you, but your obviously your wines, but anything, man. Come up, come down to LA. I'll come here. Let's let's hang out. Let's let's uh, 
Well, Verse LA, guys, let's get on that. Uh, you don't need to listen to any of the albums he does because there's a billion other humans doing it, so we don't, <laughs> we, we don't need to sell that portion. But I'm fired up to go to Verse. Uh, you know, music and food and cocktails and wine. Uh, I'm fired up, man. I yeah, appreciate man. you. Cheers. Here thank comes you, my dog, Ella, combusting in the room. And, uh, yes. Thank you. Manny Marroquin, uh, you guys can find him. Well, just type his name in, and there's, you know, pictures of him with everybody in the world. So, Manny, <laughs> thanks for coming up. Thank Have you. a great dinner tonight. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.